Fifty years ago today, there was a remarkable meeting held at the Wistar Institute in Philadelphia uh, that's had a tremendous influence on thinking over the past 50 years about the nature of the evolutionary process. Briefly, what happened was a group of physicists and engineers took an interest in biology. And they took an interest in particular in the basic logic of the Darwinian process. Uh, and thinking very much as engineers do, namely asking the question, will it work, right? An engineer just can't wave his hands. Either the plane flies or it doesn't. The bridge stands or it doesn't. They're very practical-minded. Uh, these engineers, uh, and that's a bit of a, uh, a simplification, these are professors at places like MIT, like Murray Eden. Um, they said, it looks like the math is not going to cooperate. Uh, you've got a search condition in the first step of natural selection where you are looking at a, a selection of random outcomes provided to you by mutation. What that means is that unlike an engineered system where you can bias the outcome using your intellect to aim at the target you want, in evolution, in neo-Darwinian evolution, your raw materials, so to speak, are being provided to you essentially by a roulette wheel. I'm mixing metaphors here, but the idea is you're having to make the best of a series of random outcomes. Randomness, by definition, is undirected, meaning that the process is waiting on, as it's looking to move towards a particular functional outcome, is waiting on the deliverances of a giant lottery wheel or, you know, uh, pick any particular random process you want. The mathematics of that as you carry it through raise severe challenges for getting that process as a whole, the whole of the evolutionary process, to go where you want, which is namely to build you bacterial cells or plants or animals or any complex integrated system. And what happened was these engineers got together, very, very bright guys, engineers and physicists, and they invited their friends on the faculties of places like Harvard and so forth, MIT. They went and knocked on the door, you know, the office doors of the biologists, and they said, we think we've got a problem here, and we're going to have a symposium to talk about this and sort it out. And it was then known, uh, the, the publication that came out of this was known as Mathematical Challenges to the Neo-Darwinian Interpre Interpretation of Evolution. So these critics accept that there was some evolutionary process that occurred. That wasn't at issue. What was at issue was the neo-Darwinian understanding of how this had happened. And what's remarkable about the Wistar document is you see the papers from the various authors, both pro and con, with respect to neo-Darwinism, and then transcripts of the discussions are included. And these transcripts are very lively reading. So at certain points in the wake of a talk, people are yelling at each other. You can almost see chairs being thrown. This meeting must have been incredible to attend. Uh, and I recommend to anyone who wants to take the time, find that book. Uh, again, the title is Mathematical Challenges to the Neo-Darwinian Interpretation of Evolution, and read through it. And it's, it's quite revealing. The puzzle that they focused on was unsolved in 1966, and it's unsolved today. And it's unsolved because of a deeper question, and that is all parties, I think almost without exception at that meeting, all parties to the debate would have agreed that to explain any living thing, you are limited to natural processes and chance, right? So if you think about having an explanatory toolkit, you pop the lid on your toolbox and look inside, you've got natural processes, whatever they happen to be, and chance events, and that's it. No appeals to intelligence, to guidance, to teleology were allowed. All right, you can play that game, right? But that means if the products you're looking at, if the things you wish to explain were in fact caused by intelligence, and that's what actually happened, you are not going to be able to solve your problem because your toolkit is too small. So uh, it's, it's a fascinating document. It was an incredible meeting, but it highlights the limits that a materialist understanding of reality places on your freedom as a scientist to say, you know what, this system that I'm looking at requires intelligence, and I need a better toolkit. This one's not going to work, right? That wasn't an option for anybody there. 
But you can see very clearly, especially in the papers of these physicists and engineers, they realize neo-Darwinism does not work. And I think in the intervening five decades, the evolutionary biology community itself has finally awakened to this. So in November, at the Royal Society in London, a meeting has been convened that will be, I predict, very much like Wistar in its consequences, where the assembled speakers are going to say, our current theory is bust, and we need to try something else. And again, the question will be, all right, are you going to play only in the materialist boundary lines, or are you going to have the courage to go beyond that?